Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to talk to you guys about Alliance Battle and Alliance Battle Extreme. And more specifically, I want to talk to you guys about the idea that there's been a proliferation of the number of viable heroes that the game has and that the releases have given us to compete, especially in extreme mode for Alliance Battle. Normal mode is, is fairly straightforward. You can throw almost any tier two character with a couple of iframes in there and succeed. But extreme mode, uh, especially when it came out, was particularly difficult and it was particularly geared towards very specific characters. And while some of the days of Extreme Alliance Battle haven't changed much since they were invented, since this mode was created, you know, at the beginning of the year, like eight months ago, it is interesting to see how other rounds, other other days of Extreme Alliance Battle have seen an explosion of characters, while others have seen very little progress whatsoever. So I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to give you guys the kind of a list. And then I also want to talk about what I think it could mean or what I hope it means for the future of Extreme Alliance Battle, because this is one of the more polarizing game modes. While it is, you know, very predicated on skill and a lot of people do enjoy it. It's also a headache for a lot of other people and they feel kind of beholden to very specific characters that they have to build up. And I think there's some room for Netmarble to improve it for everyone and make this game mode, which is on average good um, and does reward, you know, competent gameplay and knowledge of the game. And it's not just RNG luck or like, you know, pay to win uh, based. They can make it better with just a few small changes. Sure, why not? So in Extreme Alliance Battle, we haven't seen a lot of change, for example, on round one, which is the combat supervillain stage. Carnage was the best in slot. He's still best in slot, like eight months later. The only movement we've seen on this front is a little bit of an improvement to Nebula and Bullseye with uniforms and the uniform upgrade system. And much more recently, Sandman. Titania has been introduced and so has Absorbing Man, but they're only there as support characters or leaderships. They're not actually going to do anything. So this particular round has been criticized heavily um, for a lack of options and a lack of available characters to choose from. And rightfully so, having only Carnage and Sandman now in the last like month is, is pretty crappy, especially when you compare it to other days. Now the no criteria day is a bit different because technically any character can compete for Extreme Alliance Battle. Um, when it first came out, Doctor Strange was of course head and shoulders above everyone else. More recently, Sharon Rogers with her new uniform. And then more recently than that, Jean Grey. So we're starting to see a little bit of development in the no restriction round, despite the fact that it's, you know, got the largest pool of avail available heroes and villains. The Universal Superhero Day, um, was always pretty full of potential characters and it's only going to increase as we get more universal types. The last like five or six updates have not featured many, if any, universal types to my knowledge or to my memory off the top of my head. But when it came out, of course, Odin was number one, but we also have the likes of now Robbie Reyes, but at the time we also had Black Bolt, especially with his new Adeline Rising uniform, and Clea, a lot of good universal superheroes, not that they're all necessarily competing with Odin, he's kind of above the rest, but you've got a good core group of four or five characters who can competently do this in spite of Odin being available if you don't want to build him up or you don't have him. Combat superhero is probably one of two days that I think most perfectly exemplifies this idea that there's more options, that there's more uh, available characters to choose from. So before we just had Moon Knight, then we got Iron Fist's new uniform, then we got Agent Venom, then we got Wolverine, and we then got Anti-Venom? And there's actually even more characters on that list. I'm just going to name five, but there's actually a bigger list of characters who can actually compete pretty competently in this game mode. You know, Punisher with his new uniform, Black Panther. That's a pretty big list. And while the combat class does make up the largest portion of all of the typings, um, 
there's lots of villains in that class so the superhero combat class is actually not that big and to see such a large pr proportion of that class large percentage of it being eligible to score you know above a hundred thousand above a hundred and fifty thousand is very cool and i actually prefer this day um, among some of the other days for that reason and for the fact that while yes wolverine is the best you know he's above everyone else you have this bevy of options should you choose not to invest in Wolverine or to invest in Wolverine in a different way? You don't want to make him uh, an ABX or an Extreme Alliance Battle character. You want to make him a different kind of character. Then we have Blast Mail, uh, heavily dominated by Doctor Strange, but much more recently we've seen the likes of, you know, we used to see Yellow Jacket a little bit, we've seen Star Lord, we've seen Mysterio, and I've seen Cyclops as well. So again, this class is also, or this this day, this round of Extreme Alliance Battle is also developing other options. Nowhere near as good a score as Doctor Strange, but I'm not talking about the highest score possible here. I'm talking about just characters who can, who can compete in the game mode and hit that 100,000 mark and go a little bit higher and you know give you a sense of accomplishment when you can do it with them instead of just going for the best in slot character. Then we have Universal Supervillain. We started out with Proxima uh, um, and Thanos. Then we moved on to Corvus. We had we have Supergiant Ebony and Ebony. Now we have Thanos with his new uniform. Of course, a lot of this centers around the Black Order because there's actually not that many Universal Supervillains. But again, it's nice to see Thanos coming back and actually being a solo option for this day. You can even do it with Tier 2 Loki. There's a lot of options here as well, and I like to see that. And of course, we can't forget, I was just about to forget, to mention the reigning champ Dormammu so again another day that does have a few different options depending on whether you're a new player a veteran or just someone who likes to go against the grain and be you know an extreme alliance battle hipster and then probably the most prolific day of the week for extreme alliance battle the speed hero day despite what I've said about the combat hero day I think that this day has the most viable options especially if you're free to play you know we of course have kid kaiju and miguel at the top spider-man 2099 but we've got now spider gwen gwenpool elsa kate bishop spider-man with the uniform huge list of characters in the speed class who can compete black widow yondu i mean the list literally goes on and on i mean probably close to half of the speed class rogue can do this um, can c competently compete in Extreme Alliance Battle as a speed hero. Basically, most of the speed heroes can. The rest of them are villains, or they're just not very good. But it's interesting to see how far we've come since Alliance Battle was changed. Because when it was changed, it was quite a radical change from its original inception. You know, Electra can even do Speed Hero Day for um, Extreme Alliance Battle. So it's interesting to see how things have shifted um, in the time that we've seen Alliance Battle Extreme Mode come in to now. So that's just part of the story. Part of the story is just where we've seen it develop. But there's still, of course, a number one character for every single day. And, of course, and you know, people ask me and ask other people, you know, who should I get for this? How should I build this? Blah, 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 blah. Here's my final thought or here's here's kind of the developed theory that I have or the developed idea that I want to see for extreme alliance battle a diversification of the characters that you use in the game mode not only given the typing so not just given that it's a speed hero or a combat super villain but I would like to see further restrictions or it would be interesting to see if the community would want further restrictions that allowed you or that rewarded you for building up more of your roster. It would be nice if obelisks were not, you know, damage proc obelisks were not here or it would be nice if we had two obelisk slots so that every character could potentially compete in extreme alliance battle and in things like conquest and tournaments without being punished for not having an invincibility proc for defensive purposes but it would be really cool to see you know okay it's combat superhero this week guys but wolverine's banned so you got to use somebody else let's see how high of a score we can get it would reward people and it would reward reward rosters that have a very um you know well built setup it would require some other changes like i said about obelisks or it would require some other kind of tinkering 
I'm not sure if this is the best idea possible, but I think it would be pretty fun to see other characters compete instead of the same one again and again and again, because it does get quite repetitive. Um, and it is also simultaneously, it is frustrating to see the, the whole meta shift you know, at the, at the drop of a hat, you know, everyone was on Agent Venom and then a month later, hey, here's Wolverine, do it all over again. And that does, that situation and that feeling is a bit um, bad. It, it, it's bad for the community and it, it makes us feel like our progress is constantly being reset. And I don't really like that feeling, um, you know, as much as I'm comfortable at times unequipping and re-equipping obelisks and paying the crystal cost, there should be a better way for that. And I don't want to make this argument or I don't want to start ranting about obelisks specifically, but I think that's one of the key factors that's limiting the design space right now for Netmarble in regards to Extreme Alliance Battle. But I think that they have a good product. I think that they have a good uh, game mode in Extreme Alliance Battle. I just think they need to flesh it out a little bit more by looking at some of the kind of auxiliary factors that are influencing it like the availability of characters that's that fit the game mode but also the restriction that we have on obelisks if we want our characters to be competitive in different game modes and if we want our characters to be flexible and you know reusable i don't want a character that i can only use in one game mode it's going to make them feel um boring and I'm, I'm just gonna go to them and kind of oh i have to play with you now i don't really want to but i have to um, and you don't really want to develop that kind of um, dependency or that kind of attitude in your gamers for their game, especially in a collecting game like this with Marvel characters. You want to make them feel like their characters can do everything. Um, so for that reason, I do think it's great, first of all, that there is such a proliferation of different characters for Extreme Alliance Battle. I think it's awesome for the player base and for anyone who wants to go against the grain or just doesn't want to follow uh, the crowd and doesn't mind their score suffering a little bit because of it and I think that this does open up room for Netmarble to take further steps and kind of further develop Extreme Alliance Battle whether that comes with an obelisk change or not is you know we'll have to see whether Alliance Battle Extreme changes at all or not or just gets a total facelift and becomes something else we'll also have to see but of course, guys, I'm always curious what your thoughts are. This is something that I have been thinking about for the past few months, especially going back to when we had that very quick succession of Hobo Fist, uh, Agent Venom, Wolverine, and it kind of got me thinking about, you know, where Extreme Alliance Battle is going, and it's almost a year old now, so we should expect some update to it soon. Um, but of course, as always, guys, let me know what your comments are. Or let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Um, you know, let's have a conversation about this and I'll hear if you guys have better ideas than mine or if you can build on my ideas and make them better. Or if you think my ideas are trash and you just want to tell me that I'm dumb. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Rainbow Fist. <laughs>